Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm very thankful to be in the house of the Lord today. If we all could stand. This weekend is a time of reflection and uh, to give honor where honor is due and to honor those who have sacrificed their lives, men and women who have sacrificed their lives so that we could have our freedom and our independence. And uh, without them, we would not be able to be here today to be able to do what we do every Sunday, every Wednesday to come in and worship. So I give honor to those men and women who have fought and sacrificed their lives and who give us those freedoms. I could not do it, but I give honor where honor is due. We've also come to give honor to the God who's more than able, to the God who died on the cross for our sins, also that we could be here, come in, and worship. How many are thankful to be able to worship him? Has he done something for you this morning? Why don't we clap our hands, begin to lift our voices, raise our hands, and give honor to him this morning to come in and lift up his name. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you are going to do. We give you praise, glory, and honor for you alone are worthy of everything that we can give we can ask or we can even think and we come before you this morning humbly, boldly giving ourselves to you, lifting our hands and raising our voice and giving you praise for what you have done. Lord Jesus, we ask that your presence just be in this place this morning. Let us come in and worship you with an open heart and an open mind, not caring about what is going on outside, but worrying about what is going on in here and giving you praise for who you are because you deserve it. And why don't we give him a hand clap of praise this morning. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Worship with us as we sing this morning.
rejoice in his name. to be able to do, to have the freedom to come and do what we're doing this morning in worship and praising our Lord and Savior. Amen. I want to ask that you stand. We want to go for the Lord in prayer. Amen. Reminded of James 5, 14, 15, where it says, Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Amen. I'm so thankful that we serve a God who's a healer, who's a forgiver, who is a provider of all things. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Sister Bonnie Baker, uh, the daughter of Sister Friend, also the, the uh, uh, pastor's wife of the church in Hamilton. Amen. She has had surgery. And she has not been able to eat or drink since. Amen. We want the Lord to be able to touch and move and minister her. If we could lift them up, lift that church up. That the Lord will let his healing virtue flow down upon her. 
Amen. Dawson Banks has uh, injured his kneecap and will be going for an MRI. We want the Lord to touch and minister to him as well. Sister Blackford has scheduled her back surgery. No? Okay. Well, we're going to continue to pray for her back. And the Lord will let that virtue flow down upon her. Amen. We know God is able. Uh, Sister Murray, I see her here, says she has fallen and, and fractured some ribs. Amen. We know the Lord is able. Amen. We'll touch and comfort her. That's very painful. Amen. Especially when it comes to breathing. Uh, uh, lift up Carmen Nava and her family. Amen. Her sister has uh, passed away, her sister Amber. She's been coming to church a couple times, amen. We uh, want the Lord to touch and comfort them. Glad we have the promise that says, Blessed are they which mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen. It's the Lord to touch and comfort them, manifest himself to, himself to them during this time. Continue to lift up Sister Mary niece, amen, for a healing touch. See the pastor here today, continue to lift him up. The Lord will continue to touch and heal there. Amen. We know our God is a healer provider of all things. If you need prayer in your body, the oil's here, the elders are here, the spirit of the Lord is in this place. If you want prayer, you want to take up that hedge and spin in the gap for somebody, amen. We'll open it up this morning. There's faith that bounds here. We know that the Lord is able. Amen. Every special unspoken. Let's lift up our hands and go before the Lord right now. Lord, we love and we praise you, Lord, and we call upon that name which is above every name. Lord, ask for you to touch and to move and to minister, Lord, to every name and every need lifted up here, Jesus. Let that virtue flow down, Lord, and give healing, Lord, because we know you're the great physician, Lord. And we stand upon your word that by your stripes we are healed, Lord. Let that virtue flow down, Lord, just as the lady with the issue pushed through the crowd, Lord just to reach out to touch the hem of your garment, Lord Jesus, and felt your virtue, Lord. Let those names that we've lifted up here today, Lord, move, Jesus, in a mighty way, Lord, and let that virtue flow down, Lord, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord Jesus, to be a testimony of your healing, Lord, of your righteousness, Lord. I pray, Lord, for all those that are in need, Lord Jesus. Lord, of provision, Lord, you are a way maker, Lord Jesus. Just touch and move and minister, Lord, and sweep over, Lord, and be that provider, Lord. Be that way maker, Lord. Lord, as you can part the Red Seas, Lord, and make a way, Lord, for them to cross over on dry land, Lord, you can move upon these situations, Lord. Yes, Lord, you have all power, all authority over all things, Jesus. Just by the very mentioning of your name, Lord Jesus. Touch those, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your will here this morning. Have your way, Lord. Help us to decrease, Lord, that you can increase, Lord Jesus. Touch those, Lord, who have suffered injuries, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you touch, that you move, and that you minister, Lord, in a mighty way. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence that's in this place. We declare your glory, Lord. We declare your healing, Lord. We declare your victory in here this morning, Lord. As you move, as you minister, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord, and prepare us for the receiving of your word, Lord, that we can leave here different than what we came, Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's declare that glory. Hallelujah. He's in this place. Come on, just push through a little bit this morning. I know it's Sunday. I know we only got one service, but just let God be God here right now. Just move and tap into that spirit that's in this place. Yes, Lord, where your spirit is, there's liberty, Lord. We give ourselves to you wholly, Lord, and fully and completely, Lord. Yes, Lord, just move and minister, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Smile at your neighbor as you're being seated. Amen. Quick reminder. Amen. First off, for all our visitors that are here, we welcome you here on behalf of Pastor Sister Hydeball and the Saints of Tabernacle. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us this Sunday morning. Amen. Excited about what God wants to do. There will be no PM service this evening. Amen. This will be the only service today. Amen. Enjoy the time with your family. Amen. As we celebrate the freedom of, of our nation. Amen. On that note, there will be no ladies.
Bible study at, at Bob Evans on Tuesday. Also, there will be no corporate prayer and fasting here at the church on Tuesday as well. Amen. However, we will pick back up on Wednesday with Bible study and kids power hour. Amen. God is good. Also, on uh, Wednesday at 430, if you want to be a part of it, give with Brother and Sister Banks. The Hope House will be working their ministry. Amen. God is so good. On that note, it is missing Sunday. Our ushers are going to come, and we're going to give them to the Lord this morning. Proverbs 3, 5 through 10 says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thy, all thine increase. So shall the barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new. We cannot outgive God. Amen. Lord, we love and we praise you, Lord, and ask that you bless each and every giver, Lord, allow to go forward for the furthering of your kingdom, Lord, as you multiply it in their lives and multiply it in this nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
this morning. He's been too good. He's been too good for me. Oh, this next song we sing, we sing quite often, but I think it speaks so soundly on what he sacrificed and what we are able to do because he sacrificed so much for our lives. We cannot give back what he sacrificed. But we can come and give him praise for who he is and what he has done. And this song just speaks so soundly on that moment in time where he sacrificed his life. And I believe this morning it speaks so true. So worship with us as we sing.
scripture greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends hallelujah come on I love Independence Day I love this weekend I love our soldiers I love this country these men shed their blood for you and I that we would have freedom I think we ought to honor those men but the Bible says greater love Hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends, that Jesus Christ shed his blood for you and I, that we would be free. Hallelujah. He didn't shed his blood for one man or one woman. He shed his blood for the whole world. Amen. So we're thankful on this Independence Day weekend for the mighty power of God that has brought us freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. I got my tie on this morning. I'm as patriotic as I can be. Uh, My mom and daddy told me, they said, if you don't get a football scholarship, you're going to serve in the military. And at that time, I was like, yeah, I probably want to play college football. But looking back, I've always wished I would have had a chance to serve in the military. I love our soldiers. I love they fought and bled for this country and the freedom that we have. Hallelujah. We ought to be thankful for them. We ought to honor them. Hallelujah. I don't feel adequate to be preaching this Sunday, Brother Rex or Brother Tyler, having been soldiers. But I'm going to do my best this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to do my best this morning. Hallelujah. But I believe God has given me a word for you this morning. We're thankful for Pastor being here. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I texted him yesterday to see how he was feeling. and said, I can't wait for you to get back in the pulpit, Pastor. Amen, amen. There's nothing like the preaching of your pastor. The shepherd, the voice of the shepherd, amen. Brother Rex and Brother Tyler and myself, we do the best we can. But there's nothing like the voice of the shepherd, amen. Continue to pray for Pastor, his healing. Hallelujah. I always say he's the greatest pastor in this world. He's the greatest pastor I've ever known. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of 2 Kings. Amen. 2 Kings, we're going to go chapter 2, verse 19. 
2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19. It says, And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth. But the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him, and he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. Amen. Verse 22, So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. That scripture there, in our English language, was given to us in the King James Bible in the 1600s. But I will tell you to this day that those waters are still healed. When God gives you a promise in his word, you can take it to the bank. Because it's going to come to pass. But what's our problem? Too many times we don't like the waiting. Amen. But this morning... And I promise you, I'm going to tie Independence Day into this. I want to preach to you this message. Salt preserves the freedom. Salt preserves the freedom. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you this morning, God. Hallelujah for what you're doing in our land, what you're doing right here at Truth Tabernacle, the many souls that have been baptized this year in Jesus' name, the many souls that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, God, the many souls that have been transformed and changed, God, but I believe God, that you're bringing some people to freedom this morning, God, and that you're going to bring more souls in, God, to experience freedom in you, God. Hallelujah, to experience freedom in you, Jesus. Help us this morning, God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So I wish I could say this morning I'm, I would be preaching under better circumstances, but our whole bathrooms went kaplooey. The shower handle's broken. I've had to take cold showers and oil water and all that kind of stuff so I'm a little stressed this morning but to God be the glory to God be the glory amen so I want to say this thank you to our elders who are praying for us and I'm not going to give the enemy credit for that things just happen in life but thank you elders for praying for us for us ministers because so many things come our way so many things try to come against us and but I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for the elders in this church. Hallelujah. That have a burden for our ministry team. And, and they pray for us. Hallelujah. And they take time out of their day. Hallelujah. So that souls can be saved in this place. Amen. This church is about saving souls. Hallelujah. That is the mission of this church. There is no other mission. It's about saving souls. If you wake up one day and you've lost that burden and you've lost that, that mission in your heart, then you've lost your way. Because if you have the way, if you have Jesus in your life, then you care about lost souls. You care about hurting souls. You have a burden in your heart to win the lost at all costs. If you have woken up one day and you don't feel a burden for a soul, something is wrong in your spirit. Hallelujah. And you got to get some salt back in your spirit. He said, we are the salt of the earth. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. But when we think about the Revolutionary War here in America fighting for our independence, we think about that. And I, I, I love the story of the Boston Tea Party. <laughs> they, they dressed up as Native Americans. And, and they're rowdy. And they're saying, we're going on that ship. And we're going to throw all that tea overboard. And they threw all that tea overboard. And they said, no taxation without representation. See, some of you are letting the enemy tax you. And he don't even represent you. You know why? Because you lost your salt. You lost the anointing. 
You lost the dedication and the consecration to God. But I am here this morning to tell you, you can get it back. But when you study this out, and I thought, God, I love this story about Elisha and one of his first miracles. And he puts the salt in the water. And the waters are healed even unto this day. If you go to Jericho, those waters are still healed. And he puts the salt in the water. I said, God, how in the world can there really be any relation to Independence Day with this? And you begin to study it out. And you know what they did? They said, we're not going to let you tax our salt either. (laughs) It wasn't only a tax on the tea. Now, some of you are tea drinkers here. I'm a coffee drinker. I'm not a tea drinker. (laughs) Some of you like your tea in the evening, right? I just got to have a cup of coffee. I'm sorry. But they say, you know what? You're not going to tax our tea, and you're not going to tax our salt. So what did they do? They put an embargo on the tea, or on the, well, on the tea and on the salt. And they said, we're not even going to send any salt your way anymore. But what did the colonies do? The colonies said, we'll rise up and we'll produce our own salt. Because the salt would preserve their food. And if they didn't have any food to eat, they would die. And if they didn't have livestock, they would die. So they gave salt to their livestock. And we know salt in the wound, right? That doesn't feel good, but salt brings healing. And they knew they needed salt for healing. So they said, you're not going to tax us anymore. And now you're going to bring an embargo? Guess what? We will rise up, uh, hallelujah, and we will make our own salts. Uh, And you had the beginning of salt works, oh, hallelujah, on American soil. And they began to make their own salts and produce their own salt. Praise God. So salt preserves the freedom. And I've come here to tell you, some of you were free, but you've let the enemy come against you. You've let the voice of the enemy attack you to where you've lost your salt. And it's time to get the salt back. It's time to put the salt back in the water so that you can be healed and you can lead others to healing. Hallelujah. Salt preserves the freedom we go back into the book of 2 Kings, chapter 1, verse 1, then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. See, there was Elijah, and Elijah was a prophet, that it was a public profile. He did some mighty things. God used him to do mighty things. He called fire down from heaven against the prophets of Baal. God takes him up in a whirlwind. But God was getting ready to hand... Elijah's ministry off to Elisha. Guess what? The reign of Ahab and Jezebel was coming to an end. And Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And their son Ahaziah fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. Elijah had the salt, and Elisha was going to have the salt. But Ahab and Jezebel never consulted with God. God even allowed Ahab to repent, and yet he would not repent. So God was bringing their kingdom to an end. And and, and just time after time after time, and what's he said? Go inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, instead of going to God. It's time that you go back to Jesus Christ for the answer so you can get your salt back, so that you can get the anointing back. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them, is it not because there is not a God in Israel? I ask you this morning, the problems and the frustrations and the issues in your life, is it not because there's not a God in heaven? There is a God in heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. He can heal you this morning. He can put salt back in your life. He can put the anointing back on your life.
verse 10, oh, Elijah, he's not done yet. He's not off the scene yet. <laughs> and Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, if I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Elijah calls down the fire of heaven again. And it killed him. And then it happens again another 50. And then finally one of the captains says, spare me, spare me. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I don't even more of that. See, that's Old Testament though. It's time for us to call down the fire. And see people get the Holy Ghost. See people repent of their sin right here at an altar, an old-fashioned altar. Amen. Hallelujah. So you come to chapter 2 where we took our text from. And God's getting ready to take Elijah. And Elijah's trying to move. And he wants Elisha to stay and not go with him. Verse 6 in chapter 2, as the Lord liveth as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. Elisha said, I'm not leaving you. Some of you have gotten too far away from your pastor. It's time to get back close to your pastor. It's time to get back close to the man of God and said, I want your mantle on me. I want your anointing on me. You will not go further than the man of God. If you will not get close to the man of God. But if you will get close to the man of God. He might put a double portion on you. And you'll see a powerful ministry. See when you get close to the man of God. What does God do? He begins to put salt on your life. He begins to put an anointing on your life. He begins to pour out his spirit through your ministry. See instead of Ahab. And Jezebel and Ahaziah running to Elijah. They ran away from Elijah. And they called on Beelzebub. But it's time that you call on Jesus Christ. Uh, and you get close to the man of God. Because you need salt in your life. Verse 12. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes. And rent them in two pieces. Verse 11, God had taken Elijah in the whirlwind. And Elisha just ripped and tears his clothes. He said, my God, I need Elijah. I need Elijah in my life. But God was getting ready to put a double portion on Elijah. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Verse 15, And when the sons of the prophets which were view, to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him. And bowed themselves to the ground before him. See, he had, God was putting a double portion. He was getting salt and anointing put on his life. Because he loved the man of God in his life. Hallelujah. He loved the man of God in his life. If you are at a place where you are running from God. You're running from the voice of your pastor. It's time to get back in this altar. It's time to get back in this altar and get as close to God as you can and as close to the man of God as you can because if you want the blessing on your life, if you want the salt on your life, you got to get the covering of the man of God in your life. you got to get the mantle of God, hallelujah, over you. So the men of the city come to Elisha, one of his first miracles. They said, the land is pleasant, but the water is bad. It's not in the ground barren. Well, why do you think the water was bad? Why do you think the ground was dry? Because of Ahab and Jezebel. Because of Ahaziah and this kingdom of wretchedness 
and all the wicked things that they had done. What's going to happen to a city when there's wickedness in the city? The water's going to be bad. And the land is going to be barren. There will not be anything produced. I got to talking to Brother Vinny Azzalini, hallelujah, about a couple months ago. And he began to talk about Brother Bounds and the church, the anchor church in Zanesville. And he said, you know what? There's business, new businesses showing up in Zanesville. There's new restaurants. There's new things happening in Zanesville. Why? Because the power of the church in that city. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I went to the fireworks last year in Monroe, and the police wouldn't let us go down the main road. <laughs> and we had to take a turn. And I went up and I said, I've never seen Monroe like this and all those houses. And I said, Man, what an incredible city. You know, and I've lived here quite a while. But I believe God's getting ready to do things in Middletown and in Trenton. Hallelujah. Come on. He's getting ready to make this church a city set on a hill. It's getting ready to be a refuge. But we got to get the salt here. There's got to be a strong anointing. There's got to be a double portion anointing in this place. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. Those waters were healed. Come on, it's time that we begin to pray, God, heal the waters of Middletown. Uh, heal the waters of Trenton. Uh, heal the waters of Monroe and Hamilton and all the surrounding areas. Get hungry for God. Get a double portion of anointing on your life. Come on, it's more than just coming in on a Sunday. It's more than just coming in on a Sunday. Come on, feed me, Pastor. Feed me, Brother Tyler. Feed me, Brother Rex. Feed me, Brother Bobby. Because I've lost my salt because I didn't spend any time in the Word this week. I didn't spend any time in prayer this week. I decided, you know what, I'm not going to fast this week. Come on, if you want the salt in your life, you got to begin to do things that God approves of. You got to begin to do the things that God has called you to do. And then on top of that, it's getting close to the man of God. Matthew 5, it says, Ye are, verse 13, the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of man. How many of you have lost your salt this morning? How are you going to get your salt back? You're going to come down to this altar and you're going to say, God, I want the salt back in my life. I want the anointing back in my life, God. I'm tired of being far away from you. I'm tired of being far away from the man of God. I'm tired of being away from your anointing. I'm tired of, of not seeing God move in my life. I'm tired of not seeing God use me. God, I want you to use me, and I want the salt back. I want the anointing back, and I want a double portion of it so I can be used in this world to reach a hurting soul. Men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light shine, so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have come to not. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He says here, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whew. How many of you said, God, I want every I want every I dotted and every T crossed because I want them to see you in me. I don't want to let down on anything in my life. Come on, quit being ashamed of who you are. 
See, when you get ashamed of being apostolic, it's because you've lost the salt in your life. But when you've got the salt in your life, you're not ashamed of who you are. You can walk out in this world. Oh, I'm an apostolic Pentecostal, and I have the salt, uh, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ on me. I have the anointing of Jesus Christ on me. Verse 20, this is key, for I say unto you that accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> the righteous, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, look at me. Look at what I'm doing. Jesus would heal somebody and he would say, go tell nobody. But somebody gets healed and we go all over Facebook. Look at me, look at me. God use me to heal somebody. Jesus would say, go and tell nobody. Because what Jesus was trying to show them, that it wasn't about them. It was about him and his kingdom. Hallelujah. About him and his kingdom. Hallelujah. It's not about us. It's not, we have no power in of ourselves. We have no salt in of ourselves. But if we will get close to God, there will be a powerful salt, a powerful anointing that he will put on us. See, the Pharisees and the Sad, they looked like they had it all together. They had the suit on. They had the long hair and the long skirts. Uh, but inside their heart, they were vile. Hallelujah. But Jesus called them out uh, and said, if you want to be righteous, your righteousness better exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes. Come on, apostolics, uh, we got to get a love in our hearts. Uh, if you get the salt back on your life, you will get a love in your heart. See, if you don't have love, you don't have anything. But when you get close to the man of God, you get close to God. Hallelujah, that salt begins to come on you. And you begin to love people radically. You begin to love them to the kingdom. You begin to love them to the water. You begin to love them to the Holy Ghost. What happened to the water? What happened to the land? The lack of salt began to corrupt the land. It began to corrupt the water. And then the water couldn't heal the land. Uh, we are washed by the water of the word. But if, if that word was hidden in you at one time and you've lost that salt, uh, you've got to get the salt back on. That word that's in you. Galatians 5, I only got a couple more places in Scripture and we're going to close. Galatians 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Come on, some of you were made free. Some of you had the salt, but you've got yourself yoked up with bondage again. You've got yourself entangled again. But you can be made free right here at this altar. Because you know what happens when you get entangled and you get bondage in your life? You become isolated. You become all about yourself. You don't care about souls anymore. You don't care about the kingdom of God anymore. It's all about you and your kingdom. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Woo, these are strong words. I'm telling you, there's a couple things. I know my generation. My parents said, go to college, get a good job. Go to college. And you know what came with all that? Material possession. That's fine, nothing wrong with that. But my generation has become lost in material possessions. My generation has become lost in social media. And I say, where are the Elijahs? And where are the Elishas that say, I don't care about social media. I don't care about material things. I care about the anointing of God. I care about the salt of God on my life.
I look around and I say, God, we need an evangelist for our Spanish services every once in a while. Why do I struggle to find an evangelist? Because my generation said, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Big houses, big cars, fancy clothes. Give me social media. Let me show you what I am. But God is calling an Elijah and an Elisha generation back. Hallelujah. To get hungry for God. To get the salt back in your life. Come on, I'm trying to tie all this together. Because when you get the salt back, you get Elijah and Elisha's spirit. You want to be next to your pastor. You want to hear his word in your life. Hallelujah. You want to love people to the house of God. You want to love people to the altar. You want to love people to baptism. You want to love people to the Holy Ghost. And then, I might step on some toes here. Now, you don't only love them to... Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You love them enough to teach them a Bible study. Woo! Uh-oh. Don't step on my weekly nights when I can be at home watching my shows. When I can take myself out to my fancy restaurant and dinner. Come on. Do you love souls? Do you love your pastor? Do you love the house of God? Hallelujah. Do you love the kingdom of God that you're willing to get hungry again? Do you have some salt on your life? Do you have the anointing on your life? Or have you lost the salt? Have you lost the hunger for the kingdom? Have you lost the passion for the house of God? Have you lost the passion for souls? Have you lost the passion to be next to your pastor and to know him and to know his voice? Because his voice is God's voice in your life. What we're living in. No, 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 pastor. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. What happened when they told Moses that? You know what I love about Pastor Heidebaugh? His mercy. Wow. What a man of mercy. I've even come to him sometimes and said, God, Pastor, I'm so frustrated. Blah, blah, blah. He just said, go love him. Give him mercy. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. And Mary Faye, have to, well, this person didn't show up on Sunday and that person didn't show up and that person didn't show up. How are we going to get this Spanish work to grow? And these people don't show up. Just go love them. Go love them. Hallelujah. Take them to dinner. Hallelujah. Go spend some time with them. Hallelujah. Come on. When you get the salt back in your life, you're going to love people. You're going to go the extra mile. Hallelujah. It's not going to be too much to ask. There's just so much in the word, and I'm going to have to. It's a lot. Oh, I got to hurry. So, elders, love you, man. You guys just pray with people. It's awesome, man. Come on. I want to be just like you guys. If the Lord will tarry and let me live longer <laughs> till I get an old man, I want to be just like you guys, man. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to get back in shape, but it's hard, man. <laughs> you just can't recover like you used to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse Ephesians, or I'm sorry, Colossians 4. I'm going to close. Let the musicians come. There's just so much. We gotta shut this down. Hallelujah. And I preach till one o'clock when that's not good. Hallelujah. Ephesians or Colossians 4, verse 1 says, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. See, the salt and the anointing comes through that prayer. When you get back in that room with God, he begins, let me pour that anointing out on you. Let me put a little salt in there. Hallelujah. And watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for that which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. end with this verse. What a powerful verse coming up. Let your speech be always with grace. 
seasoned with salt. Seasoned with salt. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. There are real hurting people in this world. And the words that come out of our mouth, if they're not seasoned with salt, can cause damage. Even if it's the scripture of God. But I promise you, if you will get a prayer life, and you will get close to your pastor, hallelujah, and you will get his voice in your life, and and you'll read the word every day and study it, and you'll mix in a day of fasting, I promise you, the salt will come on your life. Hallelujah, and your words will be seasoned with salt. And I'm going to close with this. We can all stand. I happened to stumble across a video on YouTube one day, and it impacted me so greatly. There's a, a young woman in England, and she doesn't go out on the streets and preach. She takes her keyboard, and she begins to play the music of God in the streets. And if you watch those, you'll see people that are so hard of heart. Heart of heart. Angry. Rage in their heart. And they begin to melt in the presence of God. There is something powerful. Hallelujah. When we begin to sing unto God praises. Hallelujah. We begin to lift up worship to Him. Hallelujah. That even the hardest of hearts, hallelujah, can begin to cry out to God. And I would watch those and the tears would stream. That this lady, she never judges anybody, but she just begins to sing unto God. And they begin to come. And you'll see people, drug addicts and alcoholics, and the one guy's drinking his alcohol. And he's so bound up with alcohol, and he begins to pour it out. Come on, we got to love God. we got to love people. Hallelujah. I challenge you this morning. If you've lost your way, if you've lost the salt, if you've grown cold, if you've gotten away from Pastor Heidevall, if you've gotten away from your calling and your ministry, you can get it back this morning right here at this altar. There is a river of healing water flowing right here this morning. There is a river of salt. Oh, hallelujah. Elijah put the salt in the water and preserved the freedom. I can see it in the spirit. There is salt flowing right here this morning. Oh, Jesus is saying, come down and get some salt back in your life. Hallelujah. Get some salt back in your life. These altars are open. Come on, come and visit with Jesus this morning.